Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2018 here in Durban, South Africa, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Professor Amerigo Muchanga, who is from the uh, INCM in Mozambique. He's the Director General. Professor Muchanga, thank you very much indeed for joining us in the studio today. My pleasure. Tell us, what's INCM? INCM is a communications regulator in Mozambique. We do regulate communication, and that means telecommunications as well as postal services. Okay, great. And what does smart digital development mean to you, particularly in Mozambique? In Mozambique, and I'd say also in the rest of the world, smart digital development means better life for all of, for all of us. It means the recognition that information and communication technology can improve our life by making the life easier, by making everyone to be able to access the benefits of the information that's available in the internet, but also it means that we can also participate in the digital economy by taking advantage of information communication technology. And what single innovation or innovative technology, product, strategy or policy do you think uh, is most transformative? I see a lot, but one of them that I, at least I can see that even today it's changing the life of people in Mozambique is the digital financial systems. That one, I think, it has enabled a lot of Mozambicans that wouldn't have access to financial services, I mean, to be able to use it. And that means that they can use it in a very remote area. But most importantly, it means that they can bring all their savings, I mean, to be able to access the financial service. And that also it's enabling them to access to other kinds of services they wouldn't have access to, especially the microfinance, a part of it, and also the fact that they can get microinsurance that's not possible using the traditional banking system. This is one area. But if I look in the future, I think artificial intelligence will also have an impact. I can see also the advantage of the Internet of Things in the way that the city is organized. So I see a lot of potential that's coming in the future. Now, as we know, SMEs are uh, uh, particularly important in the digital ecosystem. I wanted to ask you, how is Mozambique uh, uh, stimulating digital entrepreneurship? Um, to, uh, the, one of the very good things that I see in Mozambique in that area is that we are starting to have some niches of innovation that is done by really very small companies that otherwise they wouldn't be able to, to exist if, not, if no, we're not the fact that the, the information communication technology, it enables them to exist. So I, I see that even places like Embassy in Mozambique, there is one uh, innovation hub that's called the Orange Corners that's managed by the Dutch Embassy in Mozambique. But we also see banks that are, are creating small innovation uh, innovation houses that enable those who have ideas to go there and develop the idea. That happens at the, at the, at the university as well. It happens in the embassy. It ha happens in the banking sector. So uh, even here in, in, in this particular uh, conference, we are bringing 14 of those small companies that are being housed and being nurtured in those innovation hubs. So that's thank thankful to the ICTs because otherwise we wouldn't have this kind of innovation. And what do you hope this experience will bring to them? First of all, they're all, from the 14 that we are bringing here, five of them, they've been selected to go into a pitching. So that means that they'll be able to interact with those who are developing similar ideas, and hopefully they can also get funding to be able to continue and develop their products. But apart from that, they will be also be exposed to ideas from others who are doing research in the same area or developing solutions in those areas. So from there, we hope that in the future, we may have companies that will grow and be able to bring services in, in the country. Services in a new area, in a new way than we could anticipate. So I'm very happy to see this because um, we, we used to see two big applications I mean, from outside, but when I see small applications that solve the problems locally in Mozambique, I think that is really very uh, future looking because it means that now we have people that believe that they can develop a, a, a solution that is targeting a particular need of the Mozambican society. Absolutely, De definitely future proofing and very en encouraging as well. In terms of um your digital vision, what's Mozambique's digital vision for the next five years? For the next five years, if, what do we see as a challenge? We think that if I, I look from the perspective of the communications regulator and the government, we need to create the conditions for all those ideas to develop. So first of all, we need to provide a, a, a bandwidth for all ubiquitously. So that means in respect of where you're located, whether in the city or rural area, you need to, have, to be able to access adequate 
uh, bandwidth in order to provide service. So we are keen now in developing, we have already developed a, a broadband strategy that we are starting to implement. And within that strategy in five years, we, we, we want to deploy broadband almost everywhere in the country, at least in particular, to be able to reach 70% of the population that is living in, in Mozambique. So that's it's one challenge. The second challenge is affordability. So you have access bandwidth, but you need to, to be able to provide it at a price that people can afford. So the issue of affordability is one that we are addressing. The third and most important is that we want to develop applications, applications that take advantage of that bandwidth to be able to provide services for the community, be them services for the industry or services for private sector or services for, for the government. So the, the vision in the country is make broadband available, make it uh, affordable, and third, enable people to develop applications, applications in local languages. So we want applications that are localized in such a way that people don't have to speak Portuguese or English or French to be able to access applications. They have to be able to use them in the local language because that's when we can expect that we will have broadband for all and all the benefits that come out of it. Briefly, in terms of affordability, how can you make broadband affordable? Uh, w one way to make broadband affordable to all of us, first is that we need to, to ensure that the services or the, inf in the infrastructure is developed at a very low cost. So things like infrastructure sharing or looking to low cost technologies that can provide capacity to everyone, that will bring the price down. But as you also increase the users, it means that the companies are providing their services, they can afford to provide it at a smaller cost because they know that the, the usage is, is larger. So the more we make devices available to people to be able to use the service, it means that it will also make the service in, to the end user very small. So it's a combination of policies that you need, including policies like looking to the cost of importing the devices to the country, uh, imp uh, importing I mean, local people to build the technology locally, so that in the end, the price to the service to the end user, it has to be as low as possible. Because only then you can generate all advantage of having, I mean, the, this technology we are talking about. Now you've, you've come here to uh, Telecom World in Durban. You brought in 14 uh, SMEs here. I just wanted to ask you, what's the value for you of attending events such as this? This event, it's an open eye, uh, uh, eye opening to all of us. In particular, I think for the small SMEs that we brought here, they've never been to an event like this one. By coming here, they can also dream more than they've been dreaming because they'll be able to see what else is happening elsewhere, here in the continent as well as outside. So we expect that by the end of this conference, the, the small companies we brought here, uh, as well as all our colleagues in Mozambique that are participating here, they will take good ideas at home and see how they can, they can implement it there. And, and to, to be able to dream of the better future that can be enabled by all the development that we are seeing in the sector. We expect them to be able to focus on those areas that everyone is doing research, is focusing what what benefits can be done with 5G capacity, for instance. Uh, to which extent that will the autonomous vehicles can have an impact in way the city functions. How can you use the smart seats con concept? I mean, to reduce, for instance, I mean the consumption of energy. How can you use this? I mean, to ensure that the transportation in, in the country is very effective and efficient. So there's a lots of ideas that they can learn by participating in an event like this one. So I'm really very happy to see this event coming to Africa because it has enabled for us in particular because we are neighbor to bring much more people than we could, we could be able to take, say, to a, a country like a city like Geneva. That would be more costing than having the event close to, to, to Mozambique and here in Africa. I quite agree with you. Well, it's been great having you in the studio and great having you here, of course, at the event. Thank you very much, Steve. We wish you the very best of the future. My pleasure, and thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you.